Hi, thank you and welcome to uh, today's kickoff meeting of the Innovative Manufacturing in Africa Award uh, by Distributed Manufacturing Kenya. Uh, so just a, a quick uh, word, uh, the, the research in the, within the e e IMA Innovative Manufacturing in Africa project will be conducted with compliance with the GDPR regulation. So it means that all that is transparency of research, data collection, or consent to participate will be uh, included, protection of personal data and data protection by design. I think it was important to mention it at the beginning. So let's have a look at uh, today's agenda for this kickoff call. So we'll have the welcome, of course, everybody to join this uh, kickoff call. We will start this very exciting project with all of you. Uh, we'll have the introductions of all the partners, the donor team, the maker spaces. Uh, we'll see at the project, uh, the different activities, the leaders who will coordinate, will explain more in details the different activities and the work you will be um, doing during this program. We'll look at the timeline and the check-in schedule, the communication channel, so to understand how we will communicate during the this nine coming months, and uh, we'll finish by a round of questions. So, uh, so yeah, just a quick word before we start the, the introduction. Uh, uh, the EMAP project is a one year project that will support research and innovation capabilities in the hardware maker innovation uh, ecosystem in Kenya, Ghana, and South Africa. Uh, the the project um, is uh, is is uh, supported by the Research and Innovation System for Africa (RISA) and funded by the UK Aid through the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. So I will now uh, ask uh, the partners in uh, to introduce themselves. So. We know um, uh, a bit a bit of uh, the team that will be uh, leading the the project, and then we can introduce the the donors who are also present on the call. So I will uh, ask first uh, distributed manufacturing Andrew if you want to start. Hi everyone, thank you Jessica, and um, yeah, I'm really excited to be having the kickoff call with the makerspaces um, today. I'm I'm. Uh, I know a few of you, and I know quite a few of you because I've been involved in the makerspace movement through my previous organization called Field Ready. But one of the organizations that I'm involved with, I'm a director of, is Distributed Manufacturing Limited. It's a Kenyan company, and we established it to try and find ways to bring distributed manufacturing into, um, uh, you know, it, to change the system, to ch change the paradigm of production that we have uh, inherited from the Industrial Revolution into uh, Africa and particularly because of my, my background. I used to live in Kenya, um, but uh, we registered in, in Kenya. And so we're delighted that we've been able to uh, get support from the donors who we'll hear from in a moment and to be able to share some of that support and to, to work with you over the next um, few months until November through these awards. So honestly, Congratulations to all of you. Thank you so much for wanting to be part of this. And uh, I can't wait to spend more time with you over the next few months. Thank you, Andrew. I think we also have uh, Christine from Distributed Manufacturing, if you just want to say hi or quickly introduce yourself. I think you, yes, thank you. Hello everyone, um, nice to meet all of you. My name is Christine Ombo, based in Kenya, Kisumu. I am really happy to meet you and work with you through this project because um, we're just in the inception stage. I look forward to interacting with the majority of you, if not all, and support you where I can. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christine. So now we'll pass to the Internet of Production uh, Alliance. Um, I can start because I'm part of the Internet of Production Alliance based in uh, Copenhagen. Uh, I am a project uh, manager on the research project and on the other MEC project that you must have heard of. 
Um, I will now, and I will, yeah, and I will uh, participate in the in the research project as project manager. I will be uh, the coordinator. So if you have any question, you will receive lots of emails and WhatsApp and message from me. Uh, so yeah, you might see my face a lot. Uh, I will hand it over to uh, Sarah, please. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sarah Hutton, and I work very closely with Jessica. Um, I am the, the mentoring lead on this project. I work with the Internet of Production um, on research and community engagement. Um, I have been an academic research librarian for over 20 years um, and have been working to build research capacity and capacity to create, disseminate, um, and share knowledge and information um, in many many different communities <laughs> for many, many years. I'm so excited to be working with all of you and looking forward to getting to know you and um, maybe see some of you soon. Um, I will be traveling to Kenya in a couple of months um, to the International Association for the Study of the Commons Conference. So um, I'm gonna pass it along now to, I can't see everybody on my screen here. So maybe Anna. <laughs> Thanks very much, Sarah. Um, so my name is Anna Lowe. Um, I'm here uh, wearing the hat of my organization, Manufacturing Change, but I'm also involved in um, the Internet of Production um, and indeed Distributed Manufacturing um, Limited, which I'm a director of as well. Um, I'm also very excited to be here and particularly excited because um, the, the group of people who've turned up on this call um, includes some people who I'm very familiar with and haven't worked with for a while. Um, and uh, I'm particularly like to call out Gameli um, and Isaac Nyankum and uh, Derek, Derek Magassia. Um, it's really wonderful to see you here and I'm looking forward to working with all of you guys again. Um, um, as well as the people who, who I've been working with more recently. Um, so uh, the work that I'm doing is focused on business models um, and how we can um, find ways to make maker spaces and other forms of distributed manufacturing more economically sustainable. And um, you'll hear a little bit more about that during today's call. So I'll keep it short for now. Thank you. And I'll hand over to Max from the IOP team. Yes, hi, um, hi everyone. Uh, thanks, Anna, and uh, I'm Max. I'm the technical coordinator for the Internet of Production Alliance. Um, so yeah, my work is uh, mainly to work with community members um, and the Alliance itself to make sure that anything that we're developing in terms of standards or tools, um, uh, you know, looking at the technical specifications and the use cases, and I'm really looking forward to, um, yeah, to working with you all on this project as well. Um, and sorry, I just need to open the participants list here to see, um, uh, to hand it to um, Antonio. Hi everyone, good morning from Mexico. I am DevOps engineer for the Internet Production Alliance and I work um, collecting data, organizing data and making it into maps and other forms of interactive information for the, um, the Sloan project and for the MAKE project. And I'm very happy to know you and I'm looking forward to work with you. I will hand it over to Andrew. I think Thanks. Andrew. I think, or, yeah. I think straight back to you, Jessica, we, um, we need to yes. hear from Gertrude as well, don't we? Yes, yes, please. Gertrude from Africa Makerspace Network. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Gertrude Marinago, and I'm with the Africa Maker Space Network. Sorry, my video is off because I want to make sure my internet doesn't get disrupted. Yeah. So basically, AMN brings together the maker spaces in Africa to build their capacity. And we do this through um, physical and virtual events. We also do publish a magazine 
that highlight the amazing things that maker spaces are doing they are really doing wonderful but not a lot of people do know about that and so we seek to spread and get into the um, world what they are doing so a lot of people come to know about it and give them the needed support and so i'm also very happy to be participating in this project because essentially it is in the right direction of building the capacity of maker spaces on the continent. Thank you and over to you, Jessica. Thank you, Gertrude. So uh, now we'll ask uh, the donor team, uh, Risa, I have Alice, maybe if you want to introduce yourself and your team, thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Jessica. Hi, everyone. My name is Alice. I am the country technically for Nigeria under the RISA program. RISA, which stands for Research and Innovation System for Africa, is a multi-country funded program being implemented by the Foreign Commonwealth Development Office and funded by the UK Aid. The objective of the RISA program is to bridge the gap between innovators and researchers within the ecosystem. Currently, the program is being implemented in six African countries, namely Nigeria, um, Ghana, South Africa, Kenya, Ethiopia, and Rwanda. Um, with that being said, I would like for my colleagues who are currently in the call to just unmute themselves and start off with inter introductions. We can start off with Christine from um, FCEO, and she's on the call. Good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are joining us from. My name is Joy Kiru. I am the country technical lead for Kenya and Rwanda at the RISA program. And I also serve as the, as the research and innovation tech, tech, technical advisor. I'm just mainly here to listen in and just learn on what this project is going to be achieving in the near future. Thank you very much, and I'm glad to be here. Um, we also have Gemelli on the call, um, if he would like to unmute himself and speak. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Gemelli Ajaho. I work with the RISA Fund as a country technical lead for Ghana. Um, I'm happy to uh, learn more about this project and happy that uh, uh, some maker spaces in Ghana will be benefiting from the project. So looking forward to build those connections and collaborations. Um, Anna uh, happened to have <laughs> mentioned my name already on the call, and I can see a number of um, colleagues and good friends uh, on the call as well. So happy to connect with all of you and to work together on this great initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Gamali. Um, I'm not sure if we have Victoria, probably not, um, but we also have Christine from FCDO. Hi, everybody. Um, I did see Victoria on, on the participants list, but um, let me quickly jump in. So yeah, my name is Kristen. Um, I'm the technical advisor um, for FCDO's Southern Africa uh, Research and Innovation Hub, so based here in Pretoria. I'm also just listening in because I'm very keen to, to hear more about this project. I think the person that will be of far more interest to you, though, is Victoria, who's actually the RISA country technical lead, also based in South Africa. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I think that's pretty much it from our end. Um, perhaps I can mention one more person. We do have a team from Adam Smith International, um, which is a project in Nigeria. They currently work with makerspaces in Nigeria and they are on the call. I'm not sure if maybe um, somebody from the ASI team wants to just Yes, uh, thank you very much, Alice. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tese Inyolaku. I'm the team lead for the RISA project from Adam Smith International. Uh, it's exciting to be here today because uh, uh, we are also working with makerspaces in the north and south of Nigeria, and, I, and we are also adopting this concept of distributed manufacturing, and I look forward to uh, possibilities for synergies, even though Nigeria is not part of this phase of implementation, but I'm sure there will be a lot we can share and learn together. Over to you, Alice. Thank you. Um, so I think over to you, Jessica. Thank you very much, Alice. 
Um, so now we'll pass to present uh, the maker spaces. So first of all, again, 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 congratulations to all nine maker spaces uh, selected in this project. So the the recipients of the award have all demonstrated uh, leadership spaces and programs that focus on supporting women and girls in STEAM or STEM programs and other underrepresented groups uh, as identified in the Jesse statement. So congratulations to all nine award uh, winners, Design and Technology Institute, Kumasi Hive, Triple Dimension, Fab Lab Winam, Gearbox, I owe me 254 Flat Rock Studio, the Makerspace, and TMG Makerspace. Uh, I will now ask you uh, to uh, present, introduce yourself um, one by one. I can call you uh, by order. Uh, and um, if you can please uh, tell us which town are you uh, based in um, when you have created your Makerspace if you have uh, the staff you have, the number of staff you have, if you can give us some information about the kind of tools you have in your space, um, number of machines, something like that. And, uh, and if you are part of a university or a community, uh, something like that, that would, that would help us to understand the different profiles of um, the all uh, successful um, spaces we have here. So I will call um, Design and Technology uh, Institute. I think we have Kwaku Efa on the call. Do we have Kwaku? Let me just check. Do we have someone from the Design and Technology Institute? I can't see. Okay, so maybe we'll go to uh, Kumasi Hive uh, in Ghana. Isaac, I hand it over to you. Thank you, Isaac. Hello, everyone. Um, hello, Anna. Um, so my name is Isaac from Kumasi Hive Makerspace. Um, I've been the Makerspace manager for quite a time now, getting to seven years now. Um, the makerspace is located in Kumasi, uh, which is in Ghana. Um, it was created somewhere in May 2016. That's when I joined the, the Hive makerspace. Um, the, the Hive makerspace, the Hive uh, itself is more of a hub, and it has close to over 40 staff members. Uh, but when it comes to makerspace, um, I work with uh, two other makerspace guys. Um, so for the makerspace, we are three uh, people. And then um, what we have in our makerspace is more of digital fabrication and then um, the old way of making stuff. Yeah. So we have 3D printers, we have a laser cutter, um, we have um, the hand tools that we use in, in fabrication, metalworks and fabrication, as well as uh, woodworks and fabrication. Um, we do have, um, a CNC machine. Um, we also have a filler extruder, uh, whereby we use to extrude filament. Um, aside that, um, the the rest is more of like a manual way of fabrication. We are, we do electronics as well, um, and then I think that is that is all for what we have as as tools in the maker space. So that is it for Isaac. And what type of space are you? Are you uh, part of any kind of uh, community or public space? Or so um, it's it's uh, more of a community space. Um, it's a hub that uh, we generally we run training for for ladies. Um, um, we did girls in biotech recently. Um, so we also did um, data manufacturing for for ladies as well. Um, so it's more of um, a hub that we train uh, the youth um, to get skills in data fabrication, as well as um, the other part of business models, uh, incubation, um, 
yeah, I mean, I think that's that is all for for this space. Um, so it's a community space, actually. Excellent. Thank you very much, Isaac. So now we'll go to a uh, triple dimension. Do we have uh, Michael on the call? I'm checking. I cannot see Michael. So Fab Lab winner, I will ask uh, Martin please, to introduce uh, your space. Thank you. Uh, good. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone, uh, depending on where you are. I'm Martin Olo, and uh, on the call, I have a number of my team members, including Peter, Rabin. Of course, there are two Peters. We have Naomi, hopefully, and Nancy. Um, yeah, so Fabla Buinam is based in Kisumu, Kenya. It's basically supporting the the innovators to bring their ideas to life. And through it, we run a number of activities which include uh, introduction of STEM to kids. Uh, we have another program focusing on um, women. Uh, it's called uh, She Builds, which is bringing more women into hardware tech. And we have another one called Juakali Plus, which we are working with um, the local artisans, the informal artisans, to find out the challenges which are there and how to improve the quality of the products that they are working on. And uh, finally, also the purpose of that also is to reconnect the informal artisans with the, the, the policy makers, the government and all that. So that's all about us. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, what about uh, when have you created your space, uh, your staff and tools? What do you have in your space? And when did you create it? Uh, yes, Fab Lab in Amwasai in 2018, May. Um, and it has been growing. And um, I'm happy to say that uh, actually in, in this call, I know a number of people and a number of people are also connected to Fab Lab in one way or, uh, or the other. Um, we have a board which is actually chaired by Andrew Lamp. Um, we, uh, we have um, staff uh, and we have a, a, a big number of staff, but most of them are working on voluntary basis or project to project basis. We have a number of tools uh, CNC router, laser cutter, though currently our laser cutter is not functional, but we are hoping to get another one soon. We have vinyl cutter, we have um, five 3D printers, but we are also expecting two more very soon. Um, yeah, and we have a lot of hand tools that we use. And what kind of space is your space? Is this more a community space? Is it part of a university? Yes, actually, it's, it's a community space um, because we wanted, um, initially, when we looked at um, Pablo University of Nairobi, we, and having conversation with others, there was this small thought that um, the other makers were not able to access um, a gated community like a, a, a school, they felt like this fab lab might have been just uh, taking care of students, even though it also allows outsiders. So that is how we ended up creating a community space. So it's based in the community and community members access it easily. Thank you. Thank you very much, Martin. Uh, I will uh, hand it over if I have I'm checking if we have Gearbox Kamau here. Oh, yes, we have Kamau. If if you can take it over and introduce. Yes. Thank you, introduce your space. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be on the call. And it's also a pleasure to hear Martin speak about the progress at uh, in the Fab Lab in Winam, or the Winam Fab Lab. Uh, we, we, we had, um, Early on, we used to interrelate quite a lot, but sadly, we haven't really communicated too much recently. So yeah, we're in uh, Nairobi, um, in the industrial area in the city. 
And um, we have, uh, up until quite recently, we had staff of about uh, 40 and um, about close to half of those were interns actually, people who'd recently graduated and we, we, we have one as interns, uh, recently graduated as, in, as engineers that is mostly. Um, so we've got a shop floor with, uh, you know, a, a number of CNCs, um, uh, half of which, we, which we've built ourselves. We have um, roto molders, a roto molder rather, which we also built ourselves. We have a vacuum former, um, and we also have uh, about four or five 3D printers. Again, um, about two of them we built ourselves. And then we've also got an ele electronics lab, so we're able to, to do the etching of the copper boards, the FR4 boards, and we have a pick and place. Um, and we've got a CNC mill for the through hole um, uh, machining on the on the boards for double sided boards. Um, we've also evolved to a point where we've got a Gearbox Academy, which is uh, based very much on the Fab Academy, but uh, adjusted for our situation here in Kenya. So we have a bunch of um, sort of future facing courses that we offer embedded systems, machine learning and AI, robotics, digital fabrication, di digital design and fabrication, uh, VR and AR. Um, blockchain, we haven't launched yet, but we have plans to launch a blo blockchain relating to engineering projects. And then we've also got, and, and, and that really has was started because we needed uh, to have to secure income revenue. So Gearbox Academy, and we've recently launched Gearbox Junior Academy, uh, where we have a range of, of uh, courses. We introduce the usual, you know, Scratch and Tinkercad for kids specifically between nine and 14. And um, we also include the molecular biology with that a little bit, um, extracting DNA from orange, uh, from uh, onions and stuff like that. We, look at the kids get to look at through microscopes um we also uh let's see we also have a couple of well two two companies that we spun out of gearbox and they, both of them are intended for our sustenance our sustainability for the long run um and we're actually going through a pivot right now because our funding ended in october last year from the lemelson foundation mostly about 90 percent of all we've ever raised since our beginning in 2014 has been uh, from the Lemelson Foundation, and a very, very uh, been a fantastic partner over the years. But that sadly came to an end uh, last year, and so our two for profits now are our lifeline going forward. And we're going through a number of bumps. Um, it's it's tricky, but uh, we think we're making it. Uh, so one company is uh, a joint venture with Europlacer, which is a PCB manufacturing a uh, PC, uh, a company that manufactures machines that make PCBs They're out of the UK and France. And so we're able to do, you know, mass production of uh, boards. In fact, we recently got an order from Raspberry Pi and we are doing about 40,000 boards for them this year. And we're, we're really proud of that because they took their normal supplier, which is, with suppliers in, in Wales and Japan, they took their contract away from them and gave it to us, which is, you know, we're, we're really proud of that. And then the second company is called Machine Africa in a network of, industry, of industries. And that company is designed to interface with the artisans, the guys in most African countries who make things informally out of sheet metal mostly. And um, we're trying to introduce formality in terms of some training around engineering, but also uh, trying to create market making opportunities that, that that mean that they end up buying machines that we people in our community make. So when they need a CNC router or a CNC laser cutter or, or plasma cutter, we want to be the supplier. We, we've also made pipe vendors, automated pipe vendors, which have a lot of value for people like like those. And then we also try to get them the market opportunity. So that uh, is, is and, and both the companies are uh, not yet, haven't yet broken even. So it's all a big experiment for us. Uh, lots of stress, but we're still here and still alive. So I think that might hopefully serve for as a as a as an introduction. I probably went overboard on my time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kamoi. Um, next will be uh, I O Me Two Fifty Four. We have uh, Derek on the call. Oh, and I forgot to ask you, Kamoi. When did you? Uh, sorry, I'll come back to. Uh, to uh, Gearbox quickly. When have you been created? 
Uh, yeah, so we, we started with the Fab Lab in 2010 at the University 2010. of Nairobi. And okay. then, but Gearbox itself started in 2014. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. So yes, uh, I'm going back to now to Ayomi254 and Derek, if you want to take the floor and introduce your space. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Great. Uh, my name is Derek Mogastia. I work with the Kenya Red Cross Society. So that answers the question, are we affiliated with any organization? I run, I manage IOME254, which is a network of currently two hubs. One is uh, fully a fab lab, and the other one is currently operating as an incubation space. Uh, the fab lab is based in Lamu, um, in Kenya, the coastal site. And then the incubation space IOME, so the one in Lamu is called IOME 005, and we have IOME 001 that is based in Mombasa. It's currently operating as fully as, a, as an incubation, it's running incubation programs, but within two months or so, we should be having a fab lab wing in the same. So this is a, this is a, this is a hub that uh, has been set up by Kenya Red Cross Society, inspired by humanitarian needs, um, to support innovation in the humanitarian sector, but more importantly, to produce, to, to create an environment where the youth, especially in marginalized community, can be able to learn technical things and be productively engaged, more, more importantly, to be productively engaged. So the kind of groups that we deal with are uh, women. Uh, for the, the program we are running in Mombasa is called Women's Social Entrepreneurship Institute. It's focusing on incubating um, women with uh, small businesses. In Lamu, we are doing programs that are engaging youth, general youth in the, from the community, but more importantly, those that are recovering from drug and substance abuse, those, are, those that are involved in conflict, especially when it comes to um, matter security um, and ideological groups, and also um, just empowering the youth that have not necessarily been able to get education beyond high school level get technical skills that they can be able to innovate, they can be able to produce products, and beyond that, to be able to set up uh, enterprises. So we have uh, we have now been operation, you know, very operational from 2020 in September. Uh, we opened the doors officially 2020, October 1st. And uh, we have 3D printers for the Fab Lab. We have 3D printers, three 3D printers right now. Uh, we are currently importing another one. We have a CNC machine. I've had Dr. Kamau um, speak, and it's hard to follow Dr. Kamau's CV when it comes to make a uh, gearbox. But the, the, maker, the CNC machine that we have was also acquired from gearbox. And we also have uh, Shepa Origin, that is also a, a CNC machine, hand controlled. We have a laser cutter, one operational at the moment, but we're in the process of procuring another one that will be based in Mombasa. We have a lathe machine, um, um, yeah, that that for for woodwork, and then we also do a bit of welding and and so on. So basically, those are the main equipment that we have running at the at no. the facility. As I said, the first the the lab is under Kenya Red Cross Society. It is a community based uh, facility that is open to everyone uh, within the community, but it is being operated and uh, managed by by Kenya Red Cross Society. We have seven members of staff at the moment. Three are based in Mombasa, I mean, three are based in Lamu, uh, the IOME 005, and four are based in Mombasa conducting the incubation program that we have there. Um, we are looking to expand to other, uh, to other spaces. The, the recent one that we are looking into is Kakuma Refugee Camp. I think that would be a summary of the introduction of our space. And within the, the call, I have one of my colleagues called Emmanuel. Um, he's also listening. In. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Derek. Um, now I will go to uh, Flat Rock Studio. Uh, Felix, if you can introduce your space. Thank you. Um, oh, uh, you're driving. Hope you can, uh, yeah, I hope you can uh, see and hear me. So apologies. Um, I had yes. to get on the road for an emergency. Um, yes, I'm just going to be brief. So uh, 
we used to be the maker station um, in Woodstock, Cape Town. Uh, we ran a multidisciplinary uh, space. So we, for those who didn't know us, yeah, we had pretty much everything from metal, woodwork, 3D printers, laser cutters, CNC, uh, electronics, sewing. We had all the all the various uh, trades under one roof. Um, and then uh, during lockdown, we we uh, we lost our building and went digital. So we've been running basically sort of a network of networks of uh, basically a dispersed maker space as we call it now, a virtual maker space, um, mainly run through social media platforms. Uh, so we've got a, a half dozen uh, different interest groups. Um, by the nature of the digital platforms, people sort of gravitated into their interests, which is a bit uh, unfortunate because it's not that much cross pollination. But um, yeah, so we're running groups on general making and then uh, uh, sort of specialized specialist groups that uh, deal with uh, other things like 3D printing or electronics or robotics and so forth. Um, and that is pretty much where we are uh, heading at the moment as we are working on sort of setting up and connecting uh, basically resources, basically like a virtual, not a virtual makerspace, but a dispersed makerspace of skilled makers and resources that can be used in the same way as a physical, as a, as a centralized makerspace would be. Um, uh, we feel that there's an opportunity in that space at the moment. Yeah, so I'm going to be brief and, and leave it there um, because I have to keep one eye on the road. My apologies. Yes. No, 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 we understand. Please uh, be careful. And uh, yeah, uh, of course, uh, you can remove uh, your, your video and everything. <laughs> Thank you so much, Felix. Um, and I hope uh, everything will be fine for your emergency. Um, we have uh, the makerspace, uh, Jervan. I will ask uh, Nicole to uh, introduce uh, her space, please. Hello, everybody. My name is Nicole. I'm from the makerspace in South Africa, Durban. Um, to tell you a little bit about us, um, one of the directors um, of the makerspace, I work closely with Steve Bay, who is the founder. The Makerspace started in 2013 as really just a community space for local makers to come together where they could work on their own little individual product uh, projects and then also just work collaboratively and explore their, their creativity, you know, in a physical way, which is something a lot of us lack and forget about when we, you know, work in the corporate space. Um, and so we worked like that for a little while. And then if anyone knows Steve, he had a massive heart for people and helping and developing people, um, particularly the youth. And through um, meeting one of our first interns in Blue um, a while ago, he realized there's a massive um, gap in the market for young people who are interested in engineering and making and that sort of thing, who needed practical experience for them to join the job market and for them to be able to add value to any organization. So in 2018, we started the Makerspace Foundation where we are primarily focusing on helping unemployed youth use our space, gain access to technology, where they're able to upskill and then it places them in a better position to be employed or even explore self employment um, so that's a big problem we are having here in South Africa is youth unemployment. Um, so that's one of the ways that we are trying to use our makerspace to give back to local communities and helping young people. So if you come into our space, of course, it's a typical makerspace. It's sort of like a little warehouse, creative workshop type vibe. I mean, you walk in front and it's got like a coffee shop sort of style. And then we come into a much larger room, which is sort of where we do a lot of our training and development work. So um, if we're working on a project, you'll often find a lot of young people in there. And then if you go off to the side, it's where our equipment and uh, machinery is held. So we've also got our little laser space that does laser cut work. And we've got about three laser machines. 
Um, that is still open to the community to rent on a membership basis, but we use it again for training and development as well as running commercial work. Um, we also have 3D printing. Um, one of our cooler and later projects is our own ceramic 3D printer. So we're able to print objects from clay which is really cool. We're trying to grow that and introduce it to the market and work with designers, again, helping young people. Um, and then we have a cool space, which is called our Innovative Waste Design Studio, which is where we are actually focusing on recycling plastic waste into new and reusable products. Um, so we all know about the SDGs and um, pollution has become a very big problem for many countries. And so one of the ways in which we are tackling this is trying to figure out cool, innovative ways that we can reuse waste and again, help young people using technology to make new products and then again, supporting themselves. Um, yeah, and then um, what else do we have going on? Our usual digital skills training. We did a project recently with the UNDP where we trained 20 young people, upskill them and help them get into the job market. Um, yeah, we have about six people working with us currently, um, ranging from designers to technicians to training facilitators. Um, Steve and I, we are sort of where we needed, we'll jump in and do some training and yeah, go off and do some designing or um, yeah, whatever is needed. And um, yeah, that's pretty us in a nutshell. Excellent. Thank you very much, Nicole. Thank um, you very much. Nicole, um, I will now call uh, the ninth makerspaces uh, TMG. I call Nelson, please, to introduce your space. Thank you. Th thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I, I am not feeling so well, so if my voice breaks a little bit, just know that I'm not feeling well, but I'll try uh, and take you through what do we do. Uh, thank you so much for, for this opportunity. We are truly excited to, to be part of this. Uh, it's also great to hear the work that is being done by the other makerspaces across you know, the, you know, the, the, the continent. Uh, we are based in Johannesburg, Bramfontein to be specific. Uh, we are associated with the university. We are in fact based at Simulohong Precinct, which is owned by the university. Uh, the so we are not on campus, we're just outside campus. So we do have, uh, we allow access for those that are not necessarily students. Uh, we do run a few programs this side. We have been operating since 2017. Uh, and we focus mostly on number one product development. And by that I'm referring to the building of prototypes and the building of MVPs. Uh, we are doing that for, uh, we do have members that are working from our space. You know, they are full-time members uh, and they use the space to run their own businesses. Uh, so we do the product development for those that are our members and that are not necessarily uh, able to build you know, the technology that they need. Uh, we do that for, for the community. Anyone is more than welcome uh, to stop at our maker space and ask us to build uh, you know, their, their MVP or product, focusing mostly on electronics, uh, focusing on the internet of things, uh, we work also in artificial intelligence, robotics. Uh, we do have a few machines, you know, that we use. We've got power tools, of course, but also we've got about four uh, 3D printers uh, and two laser cutters, you know, that helps us a lot in, in, in building, uh, you know, some of the prototypes and, and the MVPs that we need. Uh, we run a lot of programs, you know, from our space. You know, the first one is the skills development work that we are doing, uh, where we take, you know, previously disadvantaged youth uh, and we train them in these emerging technologies in a very practical way. Uh, we have had a few corporate sponsors, you know, working with us on, on that program. Uh, but also, you know, with time, you know, we have been having, you know, corporates come into us and say, can you train our staff? Uh, we have had a few government organizations also come into us and saying, can you train our staff? So we are able to do uh, that training, you know, for them as well. Uh, we are also a an appointed training provider to one of the government entities, NEMISA, uh, that is responsible for, for training 
in digital skill, skills you know, in the country. We are one of the 14 in the country uh, and we are doing a lot of work, you know, with them, you know, around digital skills. Uh, we are also, you know, one, a, a, a sure feel like a, a training provider you know to you know to the university there are programs that we are running with the university you know we do run with the vets business school you know where they train a lot of uh, corporates and we come in with the, the technology you know we come with the practical you know, side of things uh, there's in fact a few business schools that we have been working you know with them on, on this uh, and then the other thing that we do we do run a few projects you know with government uh, one such project is the one that we are running with the city of Johannesburg, you know, where we uh, were, you know, appointed to design an innovation challenge where every year we look for young innovators uh, with smart city solutions, you know, that can come in and assist, you know, the, the city, you know, in service delivery. Uh, so every year we go out, we put out to the call and we look out for young innovators. You know, we have smart solutions, you know, that can come in and help, you know, the city in doing its work. Uh, currently we are piloting four, you know, with four innovators uh, and we are, well, maybe I should not be talking about the, the departments they're piloting it, but yeah, it's the department, you know, it's the, sorry, it's the city uh, entities, you know, is the city departments, you know, and these guys go in and they, you know, pilot their solution in there. Uh, and the idea with this one is that, you know, just trying to give young people uh, an opportunity to be doing business with uh, with government. You know, sometimes sometimes that is very difficult. You know, you'll find that very big companies are the ones that are doing, you know, business with government, especially around technology. Uh, and the young people are not able to compete. And this is a pipeline for them. Uh, we have recently been appointed by uh, a mining company to set up a maker space for them in another province, uh, you know, and we should be launching this one uh, in, in you know, mid-May, uh, and we will be taking 10 people from the community, it's only a pilot for now, we'll be taking people from that host community, uh, and we train them in the emerging technologies that I've mentioned, you know, 3D printing, uh, Internet of Things, robotics, IoT, artificial intelligence, uh, and we train them, you know, to to learn obviously how to work in the spaces, to be practically able to to build technologies, you know, using those uh, you know those skills, uh, but also train them to be able to identify problems, you know, in their communities that can be solved using technology, uh, and others, you know. To, be trained to be able to, you know, come up with solutions that can be uh, commercially viable, you know, and the mining obviously company has committed to help them uh, take it further after we are done with that training. So, so those are some of the, you know, the work that we are doing this side. We've got a team of six uh, that are working with us, you know, full time, but we've got like I've said, you know, communities or so full time members, uh, and these members are the ones who are helping us quite a lot with the programs that we are running. Uh, and yeah, I think I've managed to cover, you know, the points that uh, you wanted us to cover, but I'm keen to hear if there are any questions. No, excellent. You covered it all. Uh, well done, especially if you are a, a bit uh, unwell. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you again to all uh, nine maker spaces for all the introduction of your amazing spaces. Uh, it would be very exciting to work with you all. Um, so now we will look at uh, the project a little bit more in detail. So all of you nine maker spaces will engage in activities. You will engage in the research capacity to show your impact. You will participate into a distributed production. You will develop common indicators and participate in business model activities. So uh, to present, so there will be seven deliverables for each activities. Uh, there are um, a few deliverables. So to present each activity, I will ask uh, the lead coordinator of each activity to present. So for the research, Capacity. I would like to invite uh, Sarah Hutton uh, to present um, this activity. Please, Sarah, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jessica. Um, I'm going to leave my camera muted because I also have been experiencing some connectivity issues for the past couple of days. Um, <clears throat> so our our first area, uh, strengthening uh, the research capacity of makerspaces as innovative manufacturing hubs. Um, this really focuses on putting the following systems in place 
uh, data systems, mentoring networks, links with institutions, uh, research institutions, academic institutions, which will all lend to the growth and capacity um, and efficiency of makerspaces engaging in research and innovation. Um, this increase in capacity and uh, localized and um, regionally contextualized capabilities for knowledge production and research management will in turn position makerspaces as emerging innovation ecosystems. And this includes um, in increased connections, new and increased connections with academic institutions, with research organizations, with standards bodies and manufacturing and production networks. And so just in brief to cover what some of these activities will include as a part of this capacity building, uh, we will be establishing and connecting you all um, with a network of expert mentors. This is um, a network of experts and mentors in manufacturing and research. And this will be a group with whom you can share ideas, expertise, um, establish new connections with research and other relevant institutions and also receive support in, in the work you, you are doing within your own spaces. Um, the second area um, of activities which will support this capacity building are a series of workshops that will be facilitated. Um, and these will really focus on the collection of research data, retention, management policies for adoption, data management best practices, um, and the, the best systems to use for data management for both uh, storage, preservation, and dissemination. Um, as Jessica mentioned at the beginning of this call, um, there you know we have a, a focus on, of course, you know, data privacy and protection, um, data sovereignty for all personal individuals involved, and uh, a lot of these workshops are going to include um, developing toolkits and sharing resources with you, so that uh, when you're collecting data within your spaces, that you can in turn use to advocate for funding. Um, you can also use these tools to engage community members um, to join in, um, you know, citizen science focused projects, community engaged projects where you um, then have those tools to collect data in support of your work. This also includes uh, feedback um, of these processes and systems over the course of the project to ensure that the research data is of high quality and also of integrity. And then finally, um, this is a part, it's it's interconnected with the network of expert mentors. Um, but one of the, the big pieces that we'll be focusing on is connecting your spaces with local universities and research institutions, as well as standards bodies. And this will be happening over the course of the next several months. All right, I hand it back to you, Jessica. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, I will now pass it to... Um distributed production and I will uh, invite Andrew um, if you can please present uh, this activity. We'll have some question uh, at the end, uh, bear with us, but uh, yeah, now Andrew, please. Thank you and uh, thanks for all your presentations. It's really uh, great to, to see everyone together and perhaps we could ask um, uh, the makerspace that we missed from Ghana to share a little, share their update, their introduction on a WhatsApp message or something at some point. Um, what, are, what we're trying to do with these awards is to make it really easy for you <laughs> to participate in the project so that you can um, use some of the money not only uh, to um, take part in the activities, but essentially, you know, on, in, with Sarah's work, with, we're offering capacity building expert net, um, her expertise, but also the expertise of the network, but sometimes it's hard to absorb that uh, capacity building. So some of the award can be used to, to pay for the time uh, that, that you might spend on um, receiving that capacity building. In the case of distributed production, the innovation action that we're taking part in here, we're gonna be um, asking you to use some of the time that the award will uh, support you with to uh, put your machines on a map. And that's why, um, Antonio uh, was introducing himself earlier. Antonio and Max managed uh, that system uh, for mapping the world machines. And uh, there's, you can have a look at uh, map.internetofproduction.org 
uh, to see some of what's already there. But the, um, we'd, we'd like to ask you to share the information about what machines you have and we can put them on a map. And then we're also going to be asking to, for you to adopt an initiative called the Make a Passport, which is uh, from our sister project here called the Make Project. And the Make a Passport is essentially a skills profile of um, makers of your community members so that we can understand what it is that they make or that they can make, what skills they have. Because at that point, you, you know what machines are available locally and you know what skills are available locally. And then we can start figuring out what can be made locally. And the whole point about distributed manufacturing um, and what we're trying to do as, a, as an organization is that we're, tr we're trying to uh, find ways to empower makers and the maker movement uh, to, do, to engage in distributed production. And maker spaces, we think our thesis is, our maker spaces have a, a critical role to play in that process. But actually, as we've heard in, in the introductions from all of you, it's very hard to have a makerspace that also does production. <laughs> it's, 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 it's very hard to earn revenue from that. I mean, manufacturing the best of times is, is difficult, but how you get some portion of a large order that's relevant to your local um, market it is, is really quite challenging. So one of the things we want to um, ask you to look at is adopting um, a portion of a distributed contract. We're going to be um, issuing uh, three contracts. We're going to do some action research, a test, an experiment, um, where we're going to issue three contracts, which will be distributed to your makerspaces and your makers, um, where we will pay to have uh, healthcare, health and care devices to be made. So this is additional money on top of the award. We, this is a production contract. And the idea is that the money uh, will go into the pockets of whoever does the work. So whether that's the makerspace staff making things or whether that's ideally um, the, uh, the wider community for the makerspaces and the makerspace, um, the makerspace Members will do the production and the maker spaces themselves will do say quality assurance and quality control. But whoever it is that has a maker passport is eligible uh, to participate in this contract. Now, when I say simple devices or simple products, complicated products, we're, we're talking about um, a simple product being a single 3D print. And we're talking about a complicated product being say, um, a 3D, print, 3D printed device that has some electronics components in it, like a switch or an LED. We're not, talking, we're not going to be asking you to make, um, uh, you know, an MRI scanner or an incubator or whatever. <laughs> we're, we're talking about um, devices that range between say um, two to $4 each to about 50 to $100 each in this list. And this is, again, additional money that will be um, issued later in the project uh, after about July, when uh, the innovative infrastructures have been adopted. And then we would like to ask you, do you think that this is a viable future? Do you think that this production, this distributed manufacturing of products is a viable income generating scheme for income or business model for makerspaces and for, and for makerspace members. We'd like to have your feedback on how distributed manufacturing, distributed production takes place. So that's what we're asking you for. And, um, and hopefully it will also, uh, you'll be able to attract more, perhaps more people to the makerspace um, by showing that they can win work through the makerspace. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, now we'll look at the third activity, sorry, which is uh, impact tracking and common research for evidence of impact. I will uh, invite uh, Gertrude to present um, this activity.
Thank, Thank you, you Jessica. Um, I hope I'm being heard well. Yes, we can hear you well. Okay, great. Today the internet has been generous. <laughs> I'll make it quick. Yeah, okay. So um, in terms of impact tracking, again, earlier, um, we mentioned that makerspaces are doing a lot, but people don't know about what they are doing. And so one may ask, what impact are makerspaces making? What impact are they doing? And currently in our part of the world, it's a bit difficult to track the kind of impact that makerspaces are doing, even though they are doing a lot. And so the purpose of this activity, being part of the project, is to develop common indicators that we can use to track the impact that makerspaces make day in day out through the various activities that they do. And so essentially, I'd be engaging each one of you makerspaces on this project to learn about what you have already the existing indicators that you have, that is if you have them at all, and how you do track that as well. And then also collect your inputs on what indicators you think we should look at in terms of tracking your impact. And then we would also review existing materials on the subject from other spaces from Europe, and then ones that we could find in Africa as well. And then when we gather all of this information, we are going to analyze them and then based on that, develop a first draft of indicators that we can use to track the impacts that makerspaces are doing. And so after developing the first track of indicators, you are going to test them. You'd have um, the remaining months on the project to try and key in records based on the indicators that we would develop. And then after that, we'll take feedback again, how it went, the challenges, what you think should be done to revise the indicators before we put out the final impact um, tracking indicators for makerspaces and then we publish all our findings. So basically, this is what this activity is about. And I am looking forward to your support in coming together to develop these key indicators which would be very useful to not just the makerspaces on this project, but all other makerspaces on the continent. Thank you and over to you, Jessica. Thank you very much, Gertrude. So the last activity is on operating models and I will invite uh, Anna uh, to present uh, the business model activities. Thank you very much, Jessica. <laughs> so, um, as, as Andrew has already talked about, um, we're looking to explore distributed manufacturing as an element of a business model for, um, for makerspaces. But um, we know that it's a long way away from being the, uh, the only source of revenue. Um, and so we're also wanting to uh, collect information about what makerspaces are doing at the moment to support themselves um, and share that more widely. So, um, this is also being done under the uh, make project that, that Andrew referred to earlier. We're developing an open catalogue of business models for makerspaces and for small scale manufacturing. And to gather information for that, um, we're conducting interviews with a lot of um, different organisations. There are some makerspaces um, in this cohort that I have actually already spoken to um, about this, and there are others that I haven't. So those of you that I haven't spoken to about this, um, I would be very keen to have an interview with you. Um, I'll be um, arranging those individual interviews, one per makerspace uh, during May. Um, the idea is to gather information about your your business model and how you um, how you operate um, that won't be shared in the format saying this makerspace does this. It will be um, that information will only be kept private. What will be shared is the abstracted models from across the range of interviews that we're doing. Um, and that will be shared under an open license um, for anybody to use. Now, as we develop that catalogue, um, we would also very much appreciate your input on the format of the catalogue and how useful it is both for you as makerspaces and for you to use with businesses that you're supporting through your spaces um, to help them set up. So um, there will be 
uh, in the sort of June, July timeframe, there will be some um, workshops that will be running around getting feedback on um, early drafts of the of the catalog um, and getting your input on how it can be made more useful to you and to your communities. And that will then be published for under a, um, a Creative Commons license for open access. I think that's all I need to say about it for now. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you, Anna. So now that we have seen the four different activities of the project, we will look at uh, the timeline um, to have a, a, a brief pursuit of um, how the activity will be um, will be uh, will be will be going on during the the coming months. So we have uh, three important dates, which are the three milestones uh, who represent big achievements three the, the three big achievements of this project so we have the first is um, is now it's uh, the recruitment of uh, the nine maker spaces uh, to participate in the project the second milestone uh, mid july which is uh, represent the all of you will be ready for starting some distributing production uh, testing um, and the third milestone is the complexion of the three uh, production uh, testing. Uh, so for each of the milestone, you will also receive a, a part of your uh, award, um, 50 at the beginning, 40% for the, for the milestone two and the remaining 10% at the end of the project. So the different deliverable and activity um, mentioned uh, on, on the bottom of uh, the timeline are actually the deliverables. So we have set some dates for uh, the different deliverables. We will share this slide to all of you uh, and we're also recording. So we'll also share the recording for all of you. The stars represented each month are the monthly check-ins uh, that we will have with the whole cohort, uh, the lead coordinators, uh, for any questions and um, and everything, but then you can have a view of the different activity um, in the coming nine months. So for the monthly checking, you can already mark your calendar. There will be uh, one checking every month on the second Thursday of each month. So all the dates are here. It will be a ninety minutes uh, meeting. Um, maybe we won't need all 19 minutes and it's fine, but at least we have 19 minutes blocked in our schedule and we can discuss everything around the, the, the EMAP project. The platform will be on uh, Microsoft Teams, so we can meet on it and I will send an invite to all of you. Um, so yeah, it will be the opportunity for all to uh, connect, to ask questions, to um, see what's the next level will be, what we are working on, um, and updates on progresses, questions, requests, support, uh, etc. that will be needing along the way. For uh, the communication channels, so we will be uh, we will need to use uh, a platform uh, to uh, share some files. So um, this is what I would like you to tell me. What platform do you think will work best for you? We have there's SharePoint or Google Drive uh, that works well for file sharing. But um, yeah, just to if you can, I will. See if I can see you all. Uh, if I can have some, maybe some heads up or something to know, like if you prefer for those who would like SharePoint, for example, um, just a thumbs up or something. I don't see a lot of. No thumbs up for SharePoint. No thumbs <laughs> up. And Google Drive. <laughs> okay, I have one Google Drive. So I think it, it it works for, oh yeah, more, okay, 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 we have more. Okay, so we'll go for, for Google Drive in this case, and I will share it with all of you. 
So for communication, we will use the uh, in innovative manufacturing in Africa channel that has been created on the forum. Uh, we'll share, oh yeah, I see. Oh, Derek said SharePoint. And I see Gertrude Google Drive. Yeah, but I think Derek, you, you were the only one, so we will go with Google Drive. Um, sorry. Um, uh, Sarah, can I ask you to share in the chat the, the link for the innovative manufacturing uh, channel on the IOPA forum? So this is the place where you will be able to receive and share information on the project. Uh, you will be having some feedback from the expert or ask question or be able to exchange with them and with the whole um, Internet of Production Alliance community. This is the place I've sent you uh, uh, a message saying that if you can present yourself, uh, this is where we will share like mostly information on the different activities. So it's important for you to check on this channel regularly. Uh, WhatsApp and emails. If you don't, I will send you some WhatsApp messages to remind you uh, to check on the forum. There's some activities or some news or something we need uh, from you. So I think the WhatsApp group, it would be easier to exchange quickly and um, for any question, project management uh, and coordination will be done by email for meetings, um, etc. Uh, for some events, oh, sorry. We will ask you, oops, I go, I went too fast. There will be some events we would like you to participate to. Uh, there will be some community calls, some workshops and uh, webinars. So I will send you the information um, if you can join. And the next one is next week. It's on makerspace and distributing manufacturing, April 19th. Um, we can, we will also put the link in the chat. Uh, so if you can register, uh, you can register to assist to the next week call uh, led by Anna. So I have put here the point of contact of the lead coordinators of the program. So feel free to reach out directly if you have any question to know who to talk to. Um, so me for the coordination and management, Sarah for the research capacity and evidence collecting, Gertrude also on distributing production and impact tracking and Anna on the operating models. So we have now a bit of time. I think we can open the floor for questions, discussion, anything uh, before. We end the call. We have some time, so yes. Feel free to raise your hand or add or just open. I have mic. a question. I don't know if this is going to be convenient for everyone, but um, if it's possible, can we try and get a group photo by everyone starting their videos just for a, just for a few seconds, and then we'll try and get a group photo. Um, so if that I could ask great. everyone to turn their video on, that might be quite nice. That's a great idea. And maybe you could end the slides, please, uh, Jessica. Yes, yes, I will now turn off the slide. Yes. We'll see how many people we can get, get uh, into one photo. That's a good idea. <laughs> I'm trying to share my video and it says hosts is not permitting. I'm ah, not sure whether... Yes, um, Sarah, could you deal with that, please? If you could um, allow Kamal to share his video again. There we see you, we see you, Kamal. Great. Oh, great. Well, I will do the screenshot uh, now. Three, oh, I'm going to get in, in picture, actually. Three, two, one. Ah, well, get, get Derek in. We can see Derek now. We have people in cars on, in today's meetings. Okay, three, two, one. Ah, oh, now Peter's here. Okay, we'll do it again. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. Third time lucky. Three, here we go. Thanks, everyone. Now we Thank have a quick photo. 
I think we can also stay like that, all of us connected, because it's now questioned and 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 so we can just pop in and um, ask any question you will have on the on this presentation, on the activities that will happening during the coming months. And I need to also say something before, and I don't forget, uh, I didn't receive uh, from some of you um, headshots or contract signed. So if you can please uh, forward me your uh, bank details and uh, contract signed and headshots um, as soon as possible, please, so we can have it all set up. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Any questions, yeah. Or comment? I think it looks like we're good to go. If there are any specific questions about the contracts as well, please do get in touch with, uh, with Jessica and uh, she and I can work it out. We have Nelson. Uh, Nelson, you can take the floor. Thank you, thank you. Look, it's a, it's a comment. Look, I sure, and I'm sure you know, most of the guys who are here running makerspaces will, uh, will agree with me. So for some of us who have been running, you know, the makerspace, you know, it has been one of the, you know, the challenge, challenging journey that we have been on, you know, because of the lack of support sometimes, you know, where we are operating from. Uh, so to have all the partners come in together and really think through this, you know, as you are presenting, and I'm sure a lot of us will agree, and that is why we don't have questions. You know, we can agree that, you know, this is well for out, but also you are touching on very important things, you know, in the work that we are doing. So we just want to appreciate the opportunity. Uh, we obviously will be giving it our best shot we will be giving it all the time that it requires uh, and thank you for for the contact details for the communication that is happening we'll definitely reach out you know where we need help yeah but thank you for the opportunity it means a lot to, to us thank you nelson and and thank you nelson and um recognizing that running a maker space is is never easy if there is anything that this project can do to make things easier for you, uh, please let us know. Distributed manufacturing, the Internet of Production, the African Makerspace uh, Network and Gathering, those sorts of, um, we're quite well connected uh, and uh, we're able to you know, partner and support um, as part of the capacity building work as well. And if, if I may say so, one of the things that we are looking to try and do is extend this project um, beyond the three countries that we've partnered with and extend the project um, into the future, uh, not just uh, the project itself, but actually the outcomes of the project. So, um, you know, the indicators that we developed to take those forward, the production distributed manufacturing innovation that we're developing to take that forward so that they can help um, you to raise money and to become uh, more financially stable and secure. And I see Irene has a hand up. Um, hi, please. can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, just uh, I'm calling, uh, representing uh, Gearbox. I work for Dr. Kamau uh, doing business development. Um, I'm not an engineer at all, but uh, I'm a finance person. But uh, we really appreciate uh, what uh, this program is about because uh, we are also faith-based funded and also an, a non-for-profit. So as uh, you know, our previous colleague said, you know, it gets challenging and we are in that space of wanting to you know, move the, uh, the, you know, these projects into, into other countries and have as many young people you know, get this experience. As you know, our continent is, uh, it's just exploding with young people and uh, we have the knowledge and uh, we're getting older and there's somehow se going to seemingly to be a gap. So the more that organizations like us can really grow and even if you grow in country and just grow and continue for the next 20, 25 years, um, that's what we're seeking. It's not about, uh, you know, we could operate from a, from a shack because uh, what we're giving the students is, uh, or the people who don't have the, opportunity to go to even the university is just uh, some sort of knowledge to do something with yourself to have socioeconomic impact. So every little cent counts 
um, you know, every little cent that we get uh, enables us to buy a piece of machinery, a wire, a circuit or something. Um, and this is really great for us and uh, looking forward to be a participant. Um, you know, we're in this space, we have an academy and we really thank you uh, so much for the opportunity to participate. And Karibu Kenya, welcome to Kenya. We hope uh, soon the whole group and uh, Dr. Kamau uh, and the team will be happy to you know, host you and show you some of the things that, uh, that uh, we have seen. Um, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Iran. Yeah, th thank you for that, that comment. And um, I think what, one thing is this project is part of a, a bigger, a set of bigger ideas around the future of maker spaces and the future of um, manufacturing as well. And the idea that uh, the kind of technologies that we have available now um, mean that we can open ourselves up to new paradigms of production where quite frankly, not everything is made in certain countries around the world, like um, India or China or Turkey, and then shipped and we, we become consumers. Where we want to try and um, enable the makerspace movement uh, to be part of a new paradigm where everyone has the power to create. And um, nowhere is that more urgent and more important than in uh, many African countries that have that demographic dividend. Um, I think also this is what the RISA Fund is looking to try and achieve. And an important part of the RISA agenda is about um, not only innovation and um, research system strengthening, but uh, reaching more uh, vulnerable communities and being more inclusive with research and innovation, because there is a danger that research and innovation, of course, can um, reinforce existing inequalities. And I think the other aspect of, of um, all of this is the is that we're trying to make the case for makerspaces to be better supported, um, both from grant funders, from, your, from existing sort of funders, but also from government. And uh, I would like to be able to think that by the end of the project, with some of the indicators and evidence we've, we've, had, we've developed together as a group, we are able to make a very strong case that uh, governments should, should be investing in makerspaces, even if only by paying the rent um, which would make a big difference. Um, so that so perhaps this this group can become a, a, an advocacy group as well. Thank you. Come out. Yeah, I um, I have my hand up, and I thought I'll just take advantage of that brief silence to just jump in. Um, this is Kamau in Kenya, just following Irene and and what you've just shared, Andrew. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think the what you've described in terms of the ambitions of the pro pro program are really very important. Um, as, as you're aware, you know, I, I have been in this game for quite a while, and I'm sure there are a number of people who, you know, uh, have as well. I think I'm probably one of the older people on, on the call right now. And um, I've been involved in a number of programs as well that are sort of multilateral in terms of their funding and scope, uh, World Bank sort of um, driven projects like PASET and the Regional Scholarship Innovation Fund, RSIF, which covers um, some of the um, uh, the universities, the ACE universities, the African Centers of Excellence, and uh, is looking at enhancing research in those universities. And, you know, I've been very, I've been trying hard to sell the idea of having uh, makerspaces at universities for the obvious reasons uh, with some success. Um, but one of the other things that's happened for us is that UNDP liked our model very much at Gearbox, and they've asked us to design um, similar spaces in 10 African countries, and that's Lesotho and Malawi and uh, Rwanda and South Sudan, South Sudan Uganda, um, Guinea, Conakry, Mali, Togo, Benin, and uh, there's another one I can't remember right off head, but um, these were deliberately selected. The UNDP has put about $870,000 into each, uh, about half of which is machines. And so we at Gearbox have done the, the full design of what machines they should buy and, and, and how they should organize the HR and, and how they should juxtapose 
with the university so that the university administration doesn't interfere with the running of the makerspace, which is why Gearbox currently is independent of University of Nairobi, because we're running away from, you know, debilitating, um, you know, uh, red tape. Uh, but at the same time, full recognition of the fact that we need the talent at the universities, both the student body and uh, the, the faculty. And so trying to crack it in that way. And one of the things that I wanted to sort of mention, because in my years sort of doing this kind of work, I, I'm always a little bit saddened by the fact that there's a lot of projects and, and efforts that are not talking to each other. So you have the UN doing this, you have the World Bank doing that. We had a really a very aggressive project coming out of South Korea. And South Korea was you know, very strategically helping us as African countries to set up science and technology parks. And uh, you know, very strategically, they were going to fund us and, 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 and make sure pretty much that we bought, bought a lot of Korean equipment, which is not bad, you know, because um, if it works, it works. But again, uh, with the UK, I don't know what the uh, objectives are. You know, it's never really just altruism. There's a business case uh, that the UK wants, obviously, which is not a bad thing, especially if it works for every, everybody. And so I, I think if the UK is going to be bold, put in some serious money um, and come in and, and put in, you know, the UK has considerable uh, um, weight, you know, very, it's a big country, it's a well-known country. And if you could pressure one, just one point, just one project that I'd want to push would be to pressure governments where these local um, maker spaces are to buy using their own government taxpayer-based procurement funding to buy stuff coming out of factories that are linked to the makerspace. And if we could say it's not necessarily rocket science, everybody thinks, you know, we need to do the sexy stuff like the drones and everything, but like we're doing hospital beds, hospital beds, there's a lot of money in that, you know, and if, if they're made locally, it means we're not exporting jobs out of the continent, just hospital beds, you know, you begin with mechanical ones and you shift to automated ones. And it's not rocket science, it's easy to do, but it's money, it's money coming in, it's money, it's jobs, and it's, you know, the sustenance because all of us suffer. We've had to close down many times, um, you know, because we didn't have the funding and struggling to make the government understand the importance is very hard when you're a little um, organization. But when you've got the UK, you know, a, an organization like this coming and saying, well, this is why you should do it. And, you know, thankfully now we've sort of broken through. We have this JV with a huge, well, a very well-respected company from the UK where, we're manufacturing boards right now at the highest level because of a partnership. Uh, and we're not trying to sort of do what Germany has done in five years or the UK. Yeah. If we can do joint ventures that make sense, then we can you know, get the market share that's necessary to start actually um, getting revenues generated within our countries. And so, you know, the, somebody in South Africa talked about linking up with the mining companies. You know, that my eyes lit up when I heard that. It's fantastic. And there's recognition from those companies that they can get their own local people to design certain specific things that are bespoke, perhaps, or, you know, are best done locally. And that's the kind of thing that, um, you know, in countries, a lot of our countries don't recognize that it's possible to have locally developed solutions. And they also don't recognize that those solutions might not work right off the bat, but it might require some support for a couple of years and some faith and setting up linkages with universities and so on to build a national innovation system that ends up meaning that you have market share that's sustainable. So I, I'm hoping that this project, I, I'll be very honest, I'm disappointed that the funding is so low right now, but I'm hoping because of what you've said, Andrew, that the intent is to do big things and to probably use a little money that to begin with to grow it and to show that there's value in adding serious money. Uh, you know, what the, what the um, UNDP is putting in $870,000 is good for one year per country, uh, you know, and that's paying salaries besides uh, consumables and stuff like that. So can we get more serious funding so that this is serious? It's not, you know, just... Um, Talking. So I think I'll. I'll uh, I think I'll you'll there. find Thanks. universal agreement from uh, everyone on the call about that need, including from um, from uh, our, our friends in in the uh, donors for this project. Um, but I think honestly, I mean, you've got some very positive reactions to your comments there, Kamal. Uh, really, congratulations on the on the expansion on the project you're doing to expand the number of maker spaces. It would be great to hear more about that and how some of the innovative infrastructures that we're developing in this project and the indicators and so on, the operating models that we're, the research and innovation we're doing in this project can support your wider work. But I, um, uh, yes, I think this is, um, this is certainly 
a, a bit of a call to action and something we can talk about a bit more on the monthly, on the, um, the regular calls that uh, Jessica talked about. But um, yeah, I, th I think uh, more money from the UK government right, right now is, is not part of the project, but it, this project will certainly make the case for it, I would hope. Um, with, with all the research and evidence that we're generating. Thanks, and let, let's go back to Jessica to close. Yes, so thank you again, everyone, uh, for joining uh, this kickoff call. Uh, we are now officially, the Innovative Manufacturing Africa project is officially open. So uh, let's get to work and uh, see you soon. Uh, thank you all very much. Again, we'll share the recording and, uh, and, the, and the slides to all of you. Thank you again. Bye bye. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye. bye.